First of all, Mobility Field Day is an extremely important event for us at Juniper Mist. It's actually very personal to us. Every time and every time we have come out with something which we feel is good, we've always presented here first. So today you'll hear from Bob and Sudhir and my team on what we are unleashing as we enter into 2025 and 2026. So let's just legal disclaimer, you all can read that, but here is the main thing. As we continue to march on our journey to unleash the network of the next decade, we have continued to experience durable momentum in the industry. Now I'm sure you'll say, hey, this is MFD, this is not a financial presentation, but I'm an engineer, I always start with the outcome and then tell you how I think this has been happening. Campus and branch revenue, great growth. Orders continue to just set records. But here's the main part. What is the winning formula? We've always said, we are fundamentally focused on enriching end user experiences while ensuring that you get the lowest trouble tickets when you enable a Juniper Mist network. This slide hasn't changed. You've seen this if you've been at any of my presentations. I always talk about this. This is a day in a life of Sujay. Whether I'm on Teams, whether I'm on Zoom, whether I'm at some business critical application on voice or collaboration, we get this pixelization, we get this frozen thing. Two years back, we used to say, you're muted. Now we say, you're frozen. Expecting someone on the other end will know what we are doing. So as you know, Juniper Miss philosophy has always been, up is not the same as good, which means a network being up does not mean you're getting an amazing end user experience. And it gets worse as you start looking at headless devices. You know, humans, if you have a problem, you can complain to someone if you want to. Robots, when they have a problem, they just stop working. So how do we deliver on this philosophy? It's very simple. You've heard this before. This is the MIST AI native networking platform. It's all about the right data, which Bob is going to talk about. More importantly, the right infrastructure. We are today, I would say, still the only vendor where for our customers, Christmas comes every Wednesday because every Thursday, there's a global production push across all the cloud instances worldwide. Last but not the least, you get the data, you have the right infrastructure to handle the data, but the right responses become extremely important. Bob will talk about AI-driven support, how we are the only ones in the industry who drink our own champagne. I prefer that to eat your own dog food, okay? And simple thing, when a customer has an issue on a Juniper Mist network, the first person to answer that ticket is Marvis. In the end, before I hand it over to Sudhir and Bob, this is what we will say. This is my personal commitment to each and every customer or prospect who's considering Juniper Mist. We will show you the fastest rollout, the fewest trouble tickets, and fundamentally drive business outcomes. How do we do all this? I'd like to welcome to stage Bob Friday, because as we release these new innovations, no one better than a Bob and Sudhir show to get us excited about that. Thank you. Bob, please come over. Yep. Thank you, Sujay. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. As Sujay says, Mobility Field Day is the highlight of the year for myself and the MIST team, because it is where we do introduce our latest and greatest innovations for the year. And this year, we have some very cool things to show you. Now. For those who know me, you know I make a barrel of wine every year. I always say great wine starts with great data. Great AI starts with great data. Great wine and grapes, I guess. Uh, <laughs> close enough. <laughs> but anyway, when Susan and I started in MIST, we did not build an access point because we thought the industry needed another access point. We built that access point because we wanted to make sure we could get the right data to predict and optimize the client to cloud experience. Now. Since joining Juniper in 2019, what you have seen us do over the last six years is extend that Marvis data pipeline ingestion from the client to the access point, to the switch, to the SD-WAN router, to Zoom and Teams data. And last year, we announced Marvis Minis. That was the industry's first synthetic user that let us make sure that all critical network services and critical business applications were up and running before that network opened in the morning. Now, what you're gonna be seeing us introduce and talk about today is Marvis Mini's client to cloud application. 
and Marvis Minis SLEs. That's going to be the industry's first synthetic user SLE in the market. Now, once you have all that right data in the cloud, you have to organize it in a way so we can apply simple severe math or fancy data science math to get to the root cause. Now, last year, I would say MIST is still the only vendor out there that has moved from a paradigm of managing just the network elements to actually managing the client to cloud user experience. When we collect that data, we collect data for every user minute for every user on that network. Now, last year, you saw us introduce the Zoom Teams large experience model. This allowed us to take Zoom Teams data, join it with network feature data, build models that could actually predict that Zoom user experience. This year, you're going to see us announce the generalized Zoom Teams model. This is going to allow us to help customers who don't have Zoom Teams user on the network understand the video collaboration user experience on their network. Now, when it comes to data science, we all have access to the same data science algorithms. We're all using the same PyTorch TensorFlow libraries. You know, what makes us different and miss is really we have basically joined the customer support team to the hip of our data science team. That is that AI driven customer support we talk about. You know, when you look at customer support, they're the ultimate proxy for our customer. The fewer customers, the fewer support tickets that our support team sees is the fewer tickets that our customers are sending us. So we are still the only vendor that is using its own cloud AI ops solution in its customer support team. And finally, conversational interface. Now, I have been a big believer of natural language interfaces since I started the company. You know, I believe natural language interface is going to be the next user interface into the network. You've seen us go from CLI to dashboards, natural, natural language interface is that next thing. Last year, you saw us introduce Gen AI public doc search. We are now integrating Gen AI technology into Marvis to give Marvis a voice and making it easier for our customers to get answers from junior public docs. This year, what we're going to be announcing is Gen AI customer support. We're going to start to help our customers actually get access to their network data and ask their network questions. And then finally, Marvis Actions. This is a self-driving component of Marvis. You know, and what you're going to be seeing the deer and I talk about is a Marvis Actions facelift. We're going to be taking Marvis Actions from assisted self-driving to full self-driving this year. And we've all heard about AI agents. This is going to be the next big thing that we're adding to our data science toolbox. Now, I think many of you, how many of you have done the self-driving Waymo user experience? Self-driving, a couple of you. How many of you were at WLPC in Phoenix this year? I know most of you were. It was freaking amazing, right? To watch these self-driving cars pull up at that airport, felt like you were in a sci-fi movie. Now, what that demonstrates is we have the technology now to build some pretty amazing self-driving experiences. Now, I don't think our enterprise IT customers are quite ready to hand over the keys of their network to Marvis, but I will tell you, Miss Marvis is the farthest along this self-driving path. Marvis does a great job right now of assisting IT people to find problems in the network, and we're starting to see enterprise IT customers start to trust Marvis to actually fix things like stuck ports and missing VMs. We are on the journey to self-driving. Now, I always tell people AI is a concept, it is the next step in the evolution of automation. It is not a single model or algorithm per se. When you look under the hood of that self-driving Uber, you'll find a lot of technology there to get that self-driving experience to work. When you look under the hood of Marvis, you will find a lot of technologies to get that self-driving networking experience to work. Machine learning has been around for years. What is really disrupting the industry has been these deep learning models where we're training very large models 
on very large data sets. And what we're starting to see is the Gentic AI is getting added to that data science toolbox. And that is going to be the next big element in getting us to that self-driving networking experience. Now, when Susan and I started this, we knew that we were going to have to build a whole new microservices cloud architecture from scratch to do real-time day two operations. What we quickly realized after we got the company up and running, that we were going to have to build a new organization. You know, this is where we actually tied our data science team to the support team. You know, that is back to that customer support is the proxy for our customers, right? You know, we have to get make them happy, which makes our customers happy. Now, if you look what we've done since 2018, the data science team and support team have got together every week. Shirley Navraj are here. They basically work with our support team on a weekly basis over the last seven years. What you see here is we have gotten Marvis consistently to an efficacy around 80% plus. Now, we look at the chart, you see it's kind of flatlined. That is because it's an ongoing basis. We're continuously adding new network features and we're seeing new challenges in the network. Marvis efficacy is human resources, human reinforcement learning. Everything we learn in that customer support process goes back into our product. That's why Marvis is consistently getting better year on year. Bug, I have, I have a question here. Do you think we'll ever get to a point where Marvis will be, you know, we'll have the answer like 95 or 100% of the time? I do. Okay. And we'll talk about it. I think with a combination of Marvis Minis, large experience model, and this new Ingentic AI technology, I think we're going to bring Marvis to that next 90% plus level now. How far do you think away we are from that? Come back next year. Okay. <laughs> we'll be here. <laughs> Pivoting on uh, that, uh, do you see Marvis uh, heading organization-wide automation initiatives? Or in addition, is it aligning with seeing more enterprise adopt organization-wide automation? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, for those who are following these Agentic AI MCP, I see uh, Agentic AI becoming a new nonlinear, non-deterministic programming landing. I see MCP becoming the next in agent-friendly API. And so I see organizationally, you know, similar to how organizations build scripts on top of APIs, we're gonna see enterprises start building agent frameworks on top of MCPs.